This is George Dion with Metal Express Radio, and I'm speaking with Gus Monsanto of Human Fortress. How are you doing today, Gus? How are you doing, George? It's a pleasure. I'm, I'm, it's a pleasure talking to you guys at Metal Express Radio. Things are super fine. I'm right now in uh, Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. You know, it's it's sunny out. It's it's been we've been having great weather so far. You know, it's all good. Uh, another thing that's all uh, good is your new compilation, Epic Tales and Untold Stories. It's been released in Europe on January twenty second, and in the USA February twelfth. Did yes. you? Did you always plan to do this compilation, or was this done out of like the COVID lockdown situation? Well, um, the COVID, the COVID is, I don't know, man, it's, it's just, it's just been a, a horrible year for everyone in, in, in all areas, you know, all over. We, we've been, we've been going through something very unique. So the thing is, um, it's not that we, we, we act. The original plan was not actually released in a compilation. Uh, when we did our last studio album, which was Rain of Gold, we had um, we, we recorded something like 17 or 18 tracks. And at the end of the day, we, we had stuff. It, it's weird to say leftover because it's just that we wrote and recorded so much stuff that you know we we are we're six people in the band so um everyone voted for their favorite tracks and i was some some of my very favorite tracks were not in reign of gold and they just came out in epic tales and untold stories so the thing is we were originally going to 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 release all these tracks on an ep but then it, it's we ended up having something like 35 minutes of music and we decided to do a double album and it's been great man because uh that that's for people who are not familiar with human fortress that's you know the 20th anniversary of the band and it's uh this 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 album so it's like epic tales and untold stories stories so epic tales is a compilation of the i don't know the the best known songs of the band and uh untold stories is is, is those those tunes that w we had that we really wanted to share with people so that was that's a great starting point for people who you know want to learn a little bit of what human fortress is all about I have to agree with that because I hadn't heard of Human Fortress before this release, and I think it's an excellent release to get where you're at today, to get where you've come from. Uh, I wanted to talk a little bit about the the untold stories. You mentioned that there were some, you know, quote unquote, leftovers from the last album. Are yes. all these songs from those writing sessions, or do these songs pull from the whole twenty year career? No, most of them. Uh, most of them were from, from the um, the latest set because we, we we had you know last album we did was, was amazing because we had the opportunity of uh, um, of uh, um, recording with uh, of being produced by Tommy Newton and Tommy Newton is is the guy who's produced you know halloween keeper of the seven keys he's done a bunch of ufo records he's done arc burn the sun he's he's been involved with so many amazing amazing records so it, it was a privilege working with him and um and also with michael borman who who's been a singer in a bunch of Sing, he's a well-known producer and a great singer in bands like Jaded Heart and Bonfire. So we were working with like absolute pros and great people. So we had a blast working on all all those songs, you know. And uh, it, it's really cool uh, to have the opportunity of finally, you know, uh, cleaning cleaning the slate and and really 
you know, giving people all, all that we had. So now, now we're really back to square one. I really hope that, you know, uh, after, after things, uh, after the pandemic thing, you know, uh, gets uh, a, a little bit calmer after, you know, vaccination and all that, we can get together and, and start working on a new record, man. I, I, I miss working with those guys. <laughs> <laughs> so you got six guys in the group. You got a best yeah. of on the second part of the album. How does six guys decide on 15 songs from a career? That goes 20 years. That's tough. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and the thing is, we, we had some input. We, 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 we were talking about, uh, uh, there were some songs, for, for instance, um, there's a song called Dark Night. And that's one of, um, I've, I've, I've record, I'm a huge music fan and I, and as a singer, I like to 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 make a, a bunch of different kinds of music, like prog metal and popular stuff, and traditional heavy metal and hard rock. I mean, to a, a whole bunch of stuff. But you know, uh, for instance, Dark Knight was one of my favorite performances as a singer I've ever done. So I was super proud to learn that. Uh, Spot, th I, this is th one of our best, uh, the most played songs we have on on the digital platforms. So we, we kind of use that a little bit as a template, but of course we had uh, our own our own input a little bit, you know. So I, I think it's a great sample, man. Of course, when you, when you have a body of work like that. Uh, of course, I've got a couple of songs that I'm like, damn, I can't believe that song is not on the album. <laughs> right, you know, exactly. but, but anyway, each one, each guy in the band has their own favorite songs and uh, you, you can please everybody, you know, uh, so, but anyway, I'm, I'm like, I don't know, man, 96 percent happy about the track listing <laughs> that's good that's, that's all you can ask for yeah yeah yeah, yeah. that's good now it's a good percentage a, there's a great packaging with the two cd version mm -hmm. and there is also a couple of limited edition vinyls are you a fan of vinyl yourself oh man i'm uh, you know my my biggest hobby is music collecting i'm like you know, I'm always, I'm really into vinyl and going to vinyl expos and stuff. And every time, every, every time I, I'm, I'm traveling uh, to different countries to play and record and stuff, I always come back home and with a bag full of records and, and CDs. I'm also a CD guy, but I love vinyl. It, it's, I mean, uh, I'm, it's, it's a great thing, you know, being a musician, but not losing sight of the music fan side that you right. got. So I was happy to, to, to that. That's the first uh, human fortress album to ever come out on CD and on, on vinyl. And, and it, 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 it came out on black vinyl and red vinyl, which is gorgeous. Yeah. Yeah. I saw both of them. They both look great. Uh, Thanks. You're releasing this compilation on Massacre Records. The band was originally with Massacre, and then they went yeah. to AFM, and now they're back at Massacre. Um, did your deal with AFM just run out? It's like uh, it's, it's just it was it was just I don't know it was just a good time because AFM and uh, and Massacre they're under the same umbrella. Oh, okay. You know, if, if, if you check, for example, our CD2, there's a whole bunch of songs from our AFM albums. You know, it's not only the stuff that came out on Massacre originally. So they both both companies are, are connected. So it, it was not a big deal, man. It's just AFM was a killer 
uh, record label and Massacre is doing a great job also. So we're, we're, we're happy about it. Excellent. So, yeah, there, there, there's a big it's it's cool to, you know, be back home, you know, at Massacre, because that, that was the first company that, you know, was uh, doing the, the, the first albums. And yeah, by then talking about the first albums, there, there's uh, I've been in the band almost 10 years now. And uh, but I mean, for the first many years, the band had a killer singer called Yori, and he's well represented on, on the on the compilation as it should be, because uh, that was his voice is amazing and he's that that was a very uh, a very important phase of the band so I'm, I'm i'm quite happy to see that on the album so that you know people who just came on board they they, they got to really learn about the whole backstory of the band and yeah i guess that that's a good thing now songwriting wise you guys kind of stick to you know, the whole fantasy theme, the kind of, you know, King Arthur times and days. Do you get your lyric inspiration from a lot of reading or movies? That's a funny thing because uh, I'm a huge metal metal fan. And uh, but I'm not, you know, as I come from Brazil, it, it's it's always curious to me because uh, all these guys, you, you know, you, I, I've played with other European bands. I've played with Adagio, which is a really cool frog metal band. And I, I've, I've done a couple of albums with Timo Tolki, who was the mastermind behind, you know, Stratovarius. So I was always, I was always blown away working with those European musicians because they've grown up on, because you're in, you're in North America and I'm in South America right now. And when you actually go to Europe, it's everybody's got such a different background than, than we do, you know, because the medieval thing and all that is very, uh, it's, um, how can I say that? Uh, kind of ingrained in the culture. It's really part of their fabric. Yeah. You know, yeah, you, you enter churches that are like much older than you know your the discovery of your continent or something like that. So, so having said that, to me it's much more of a theatrical thing than a thing that is actually ingrained, you know, like it is for the rest of the guys. A couple of the guys in the band, the guys are like really into swords and all that, and. It's really, really cool. It's really part of their culture. And I appreciate going there and recording. Uh, I mean, uh, I'm mostly involved with melodies than the actual lyrics because the band had like this direction before I actually joined them. And uh, you don't want to mess with something that's, you know, that that's really cool and really well done. So I'm like, I'm just trying to uh, bring those fantasies and those lyrics to life the best I can. It's much more, much more as a good actor than anything else, you know, uh, and much more as a guy who is like really impressed by the whole culture. And every time I, I, I'm there, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm soaking you know, into it. it's amazing. It's amazing. I love working with those guys. It, it, it's cool, man, because it's like the music. I love the music, but these guys are really cool people. And it, it, when when you see um, uh, all, all all these bands that have tensions and you know infighting and like all kinds of chaotic uh, dynamics between the members. We just, man, get together and have fun. It's been like that for 10 years. Everybody's like really good friends. And it's a blast, man. I really love, I, 
I love the music, but you know, the guys are really incredible people and a pleasure to work with. That's awesome. Do you guys yep. think you'll be able to get together and tour anytime soon? What's it looking like? Fall, maybe? I don't know. We we were supposed to be on tour with Rage uh, a while ago. It didn't happen. We were, were like upset about it. But I don't know. It's it's we're it, it's a question mark these these days. It's like each day each day is a totally different story. You know. We're in touch. We're, you know, exchanging ideas and, you know, making plans. But everything, everything changes on a daily basis. So it, it, it has never been as hard making term plans for anything in life as it is right now. You know, <laughs> well, well put. It, that includes music. Right. Right. Now, when you were touring, what was one of your favorite performances? Well, uh, we, we were on tour with this amazing band called Ordenogan. Uh, they are also on AFM, and the guy who, uh, who leads the band, his name is Sieb. And uh, besides, it's like... I don't know, man. It's like these guys, some people say they're like blind guardian-ish, but to be like brutally honest, I love their music much better than Blind Guardian, for example. <laughs> it, 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 it's a special band, and we, did a tour, and we did a tour with them, and it was really cool because um, this guy produced our previous record called thieves in the night in uh we, we released that i think it was back in uh 2016 uh maybe it's my favorite studio record i've done with the guys and uh and he's the guy who was producing uh, producing the album and we were just we had a great chemistry working together bouncing ideas back and forth so it was really cool going on the road together and watching you know these guys live because it's like really well oiled machine and and playing a bunch of of cities like munich we, we we've done some some really cool gigs and yeah and i really hope we can get back on the road you know because we've already done a few albums together and for the amount of music we've done together we, I believe we haven't played live as much as we should have. So that would be like super welcome. I would love to do it. Yeah, I, I think fans would love to see you. I mean, in the meantime, they have this great compilation album of new material, rare material, and best of. And I, I think that could keep them satisfied for a little while. And uh, that's all the questions I have for you today. I thank you for joining Metal Express Radio today. It's it's my pleasure, George. You know, Metal Express is like legendary already. How how many years have you have you guys been out there? They have been around for twenty years. I've been with them for I, one. Amazing man, amazing. So congrats because you joined something amazing. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate that, man. I wish you the best of luck. Uh, likewise, brother. I hope you have a great evening and we'll keep in touch. All right, man. Take care.